Hello everyone, it's Sarah with the York County Library. Welcome. Um, today is going to be an interesting one. Um, I am going to be taking a variety of different materials and making something that has been important in my life for a very, very long time. And that is a journal or notebook. Um, just somewhere where I can write or draw or express myself. So I thought I'd do a little story time. This right here is probably the earliest journal that I have. I want to say <laughs> it's probably from first grade. I don't know. It's kind of beat up. There's the cover. There's a little drawing of somebody on a horse. Um, but I still have it and I think it's really important to have this because I can kind of look at this and then start looking at my other journals. Um, so this and a couple of my other journals, they're pre-made. You go to the store, you can buy them. This one is a small sketchbook and you can see that I just filled it with things that were important to me. Um, there's not a lot of writing going on in this. There is a lot of just kind of gathering little bits and pieces of paper, maybe doing a collage, maybe doing art on post-its and deciding to do that. Um, and then of course sometimes I like to jazz up the cover of something. <laughs> this is the first notebook that I kept while I was in my first year of college. Um, but these are all pre-made. You can go to the store, you can buy something similar to these. Um, when you fill up one, you can go and buy one that's pretty similar. But what I find really special about my collection of my personal journals are these that are made by my friends, um, primarily my friend Jess. Uh, so these are made by her. Um, you can see the binding on the side. And I have several <laughs> from her that I have filled. I have these, which are kind of the square shape. I have this rectangular shaped ones and she used repurposed um, materials and leathers from furniture clothes to create the outside covers. Um, these she took uh, samples from a frame shop that she worked at and she cut them up and made them into small books which I really really like. These are nice and small and convenient. Um, and she even taught me how to do it. So here is one. We took some old records that she had. This was a Jungle Book record um, and we repurposed it. Um, we took different colored paper, put it together. Um, and then we even took some of the uh, material from the record book and put it into our journal that we made. And so these are really special to me. And so I wanted to kind of just make my own today. Um, and maybe it'll be a journal, maybe it won't. Uh, another thing this could be is a zine or just a small magazine-like publication where you talk about whatever you want to talk about. It can be a specific topic, it can just be random facts, it can just be day-to-day, -day, it can be just a drawing, it can be anything you want. So, um, I haven't started. I have my materials in front of me. I'm going to show you what I've got and then I'm just going to start looking at what I have, seeing where I want to go with it. Um, so I have, first off, just a pile of paper, different kinds of paper. You can see there's advertisements um, that I've gotten in the mail. I have this thing that came on top of a streamer pack. That was a uh, scary stories to tell in the dark themed. Um, I have an envelope that I might be able to integrate. I have uh, some pictures of my half-brother who passed away last year. I could work that into a journal if I wanted to. Um, I have these pieces that I made with my friend Jess and her husband John where we took just acrylic paints and kind of did like our blot test. So they're even already folded so this might be a good cover for something or to put in between pages. I have a piece of artwork. It's just I was doodling and messing around with some pastels, so I might put that in there. Got some sticker paper, so maybe I can make a sticker and decorate. Um, I've got dot paper here, so just dots. Regular old lined notebook paper from my recipe journal, so I could use that. I've got a file folder, so this is a stiffer kind of paper. I could draw on this 
uh, juice it up. I've got some postcards of mine um, that I could use in there, some more envelopes, and I've got some pastel paper here. So it's just a collection of odd bits and ends and things you might not think would be useful that they're going to be. So how do we bring all these together? Well, I've got a couple of different methods I'm going to use uh, when I was young. The good old tried and true stapler. You just take pieces of paper, you either fold them so that you can make one page into several pages, or you just take pages, put them up against each other, and staple them together. Quick and easy. Um, and then I also was thinking about using some thread. I'm not going to be doing any of the very intricate um, work on these. Um, I'm probably just going to, you know, I'll show you. But what I'm going to do is use something like this. This is an all, it's kind of a pointed tipped um, tool that I specifically got when I was trying to do book binding. Um, but instead of this, you could very carefully, of course, even if you're using this, you're very carefully using it. Um, you could use like pin needles to kind of poke a hole through the pages on the crease so that you can put some yarn through or thread through. Um, I'll probably just go ahead and choose that so I can demonstrate it on camera because I think you know how you can staple things together. Um, so I've got some scissors too to cut down my pages to size. I might cut them down before I put them together. I might cut them out after. Um, so yeah, we've just got all of this here and I'm just going to get into it and try to make something. So come along for the ride. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to talk through this first part. So I've gone through the stuff that I had and showed you in the beginning of the video and I've kind of settled on some materials over here. Um, I also went through some of my advertisements and got some things that just kind of remind me of summer and being at my grandma's house, foods that they grew that I just remember tasting the freshness of. So I've got some corn and some watermelon and some tomatoes. I also have some donuts, and I think there's a pie around here somewhere. Yeah, a piece of pie, because you know, my grandparents like to spoil me with sweet things. <laughs> Love them. Um, I picked out this ink blot that I'm going to use as the cover. So this is going to be on the outside. I'm going to use this envelope on the inside as a little pocket that I can use. Um, and since I'm going to be seaming it here, I just kind of cut um, this middle part out of the flap so that I can open it on either side. Um, and so for the stuff on the inside, I am going to find out, figure out ways to use um, this postcard from a restaurant in Charlotte that me, my sister, and my sister really like. Um, picture of my brother-in-law again. Um, I'm going to use this, this dotted paper here for my main page source. Oop. I'm going to use that, which was the top of the flyer thing that I showed in the video, and just this for random bits. I might mark it up with some marker. Um, and then all this leftover stuff is still going to stay with me because I'm either going to use it in another general project or this kind of stuff in the mail is really good when you're just doing a painting project and need something to lay down to protect a surface. So I'm going to get into making it. So let's see what happens. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take all of the materials that I selected and start seeing how I want to bring them together. So I know what's going to be my cover. Um, I know that I want this envelope next to the cover so that I can put odds and ends in it. And right now I'm going to take what I'm going to be using for my main paper, which is this dot paper. I'm deciding to go ahead and fold it so that I can fit it in the crease. And since it's too big, I'm going to make some marks on the inside pages so that I can cut them down to fit inside of the cover. You may do the opposite. You may have a cover that is too big and you might need to fit it to the pages. So with this extra bit here, I'm going to put some staples in the top and make it into a little notepad. So if I need it for anything while I'm making my journal, I can use it. And I encourage you to find use for your scraps as you go along. 
So I'm just going to fit those in. I'm going to continue to shape my pages by taking off the length on the side and making sure that they fit. And with these tiny pieces here that I cut off the side, I could use them for bookmarks. I could use them as tabs inside of my journal. Just get creative with what you've got. I also want to note that I'm going to be kind of messing around with how I want things to go. You have a lot of freedom in this. So I'm going to bring in some tape as well so I can use some of my pictures that I cut out to decorate. So I'm going to do a little bit of collage. There's some painting on the front cover. I am also going to do some drawing later on and sometimes mix all these things together. I'm gonna write some words. But this is a very flexible process. And what you do is not gonna look like mine. So I'm deciding that as I go along, I am going to go ahead and increase the paper and objects that I'm putting into my journal. You may decide that you want to lay out your pages flat and then work with them later uh, with folding them after you sew them or bind them. Um, but I am going to do that now and I'm using the edge of my scissors. I don't have a bone folder and just to make sure that my pages stay in line I'm going to be using binder clips. So I've decided I'm going to sew this but before you sew or staple just make sure that your pages are in the correct order and that if you are doing a fold that all of your pages are folded together and stay that way. Again, you can use binder clips to make sure that the pages are folded and positioned correctly. I'm doing a little collage work here. So something to think about right now is that we're not focusing on creating the same product. So you're not going to create the same thing that I'm doing. We're actually focusing on the process of creating uh, a journal. So your journal is going to look a lot different from mine. So think about other crafts you do in your life where you focus on the product and other crafts where you focus on the process. The process allows you to take different materials and define it as you'd like, whereas a product focus one may be testing certain skills to see if you can come out with the same outcome as somebody else. So with crochet, usually for me, that's a product focused uh, craft. With this, it's process. So now I'm ready to start sewing. Again, I'm going to just make sure everything is lined up. I'm going to put my binder clips on and position them so that everything is secure. And then once I have this down, I'm going to use my awl. I'm going to mark where I want to put my holes on my crease. So I've decided to do four holes and I'm going to be using my awl, which is a tool that I bought specifically for book binding to poke holes. Now like I said, you could use needles. I would recommend kind of using this twisting motion to go in and out instead of pushing in and pulling straight out. There's a reason why right there. I tried to pull the all straight out and it separated the needle from the handle. So I just delicately put it back in and then did the twisting motion as I pulled the needle out and it stayed secured. So I am going to be using just regular thread. Uh, this is embroidery thread, but if you're looking to do a long lasting bind or get into book binding um, a little bit more professionally, I recommend waxed thread. And I'm gonna be using three times the height of the journal in my thread length. And I'm not really following a specific pattern, but what I did end up doing is very similar to saddle stitch. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't really able to demonstrate clearly what I'm doing here because I kept pulling the journal off camera. But if you're interested in experimenting with bookmaking or binding techniques, I do recommend looking on our digital surface hoopla, as well as our catalog for book binding books um, that show and demonstrate different methods. There are also some creative bug classes that do the same. 
um, and I find that the YouTube channel Sea Lemon is very helpful. If you have any resources that you use, please put them down in the comments below. And so if anyone's looking at this and is interested, they can check down there for more. And I will make sure to put any specific recommendations in the description. So please check those out if you're interested in doing bookmaking or any other bookbinding techniques. So I'm deciding to finish off what I'm doing here. I've tied it off and secured that in place. I am snipping the threads and there is my inside and outside. So now that I'm done, I'm gonna use this, the scissors to flatten the edge. You could also use a bone, fo bone folder, which is a tool that can be used for book binding. I am going to look through to preview and see if everything looks as I'd like it to look and also get an idea of what I want to do on the inside. So I'm going to be adding some words, some doodles. I might add, I could add some more collage pieces if I'd like. So here I'm just putting mmm in the symbol for pi. And as I'm adding stuff, I do want to note that right now my journal is very much not flat. <laughs> it's not going to lie flat like a journal that you buy from the store. To help with that, you could sandwich them between very heavy books and put some weights on top and just leave it there until you have it at its desired flatness. I would say that a day would be a great length of time um, if you really want it to stay and remain flat, but you may not want it as flat. You could see what it looks like and then put it back in if you need it any flatter. Just adding some stuff to the outside, some swirls. And this is my finished product. Okay, and as you can see, the chaos is still around me. Um, but this is what happens when you really get into it. Um, so here's my journal. You had a tour of it. Um, had a lot of fun picking out materials for this, looking at what I had in front of me, and trying to find things that fit something that I was feeling or a theme I was really interested in. And I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be that it matches a theme or it matches a feeling. It could just be these colors look good together, these shapes look good together, this creates a pattern I really like. Um, but it is a fun process. So I hope that you look around your house and find all those odd bits and ends that you may have been throwing away <laughs> or maybe just storing for, I don't know, you know, that project, that infamous art project that everybody wants to start but never does. Um, so I hope that you take some time for yourself, explore what you have at home and create something that, you know, this isn't where it ends. There are blank pages in here. You can fill it with little memories and since it's so small, you could tell a whole story, a whole short story, right here instantly. You could draw one day, or one time each day for so many days and give yourself a little challenge, and this could be the end product of what you create. So I encourage you to search yourself for any stories you wanna tell. If there's stories you don't see out there or you don't see yourself in the stories that are out there, please make a journal, tell your story, and then you can share it with others too. Um, so that is really all for today. You're not going to see me clean up all this. This will be my task to bear. So until next time, friends, just remember to stay safe and stay creative. York County.